Hey everybody, I'm Shruti Ramanujam and I'm from the Exchange Reporter Plus team of Manage Engine. So thank you very much for joining us today on our free webinar on how you can secure your Exchange environment and why auditing your Exchange environment continuously is something that's very imperative. It's, it's something that's very important for you. Um, so before we go any further, I'd just like to mention one thing. Uh, if you have any problems with the audio, if you if my voice is broken or or if you're hearing a lot of static or if you have any problems at all, please make use of the chat box that you see on your screen because um, if you run into any problems, um, that's obviously not going to um, you know help you out for the next half an hour to forty five minutes. So if you don't have any problems with the audio, that would be great. So I'm just gonna give you maybe. Um, a minute so that if any of you have problems with the audio or the video you can reach out to us through the chat box that you see on your screen so I'll just give you um, maybe 30 seconds for you to uh, tell me through the chat box if you have a problem All right, so no one seems to be having a problem. In fact, people are telling us that they can uh, hear the audio just fine. Um, sorry that you had to wait, um, pause for a minute, but uh, it's for the greater good. So everyone can hear us just fine, so we can go ahead with today's webinar. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the topic for today's webinar is auditing. So it's going to be about um, what the best practices are for auditing your exchange servers and your exchange online environment. And as I mentioned earlier, my name is Shruti, and I'm in the marketing team of Manage Engine. So without further ado, let's just go right in into today's webinar. Um, so yeah, and, and as I already talked about the chat screen, I'm going to like mention that again now. Uh, if you have any questions at all uh, throughout the entirety of this webinar, you can make use of the chat box that you see on your screen. So any question that you may have or if you want the slide deck or anything like anything that you want to ask us, make use of the chat box that you see on your screen and we will get back to you immediately. And if we are not able to answer um, as soon as you ask us a question, I will make sure that I answer it uh, once the webinar ends. Um, so none of your questions are going to go unanswered. So make use of the chat box that you see on your screen and we will get back to you um, as soon as we possibly can. So let's go right into the webinar. Um, so at first, we are going to discuss why exactly this topic is important. Uh, why exactly do you need to audit your exchange environment? Uh, so my first point right here is going to clarify that for you. Uh, this is actually a report that Gartner has uh, given which says that spending on information security will exceed 93 billion dollars in 2018 which is obviously a problem because none of us want to spend way too much and security attacks are only on the rise security attacks seem to keep increasing year by year and hackers only seem to be getting more sophisticated as time passes um, so that's why you need to make sure that your network is secure and that there are no um, cyber threats that happen in your organization that's what all of us hope for that no attacks happen and email security is even more important because of my next point right here. So um, emails are an easy entry point for cyber attacks. Everyone in your organization, right from the CEO, the topmost person in your organization, to an intern in your organization is going to be using emails for communication. Um, and emails are an easy entry point for cyber attacks. Hackers know this and they make use of this and that's how malware um, or any kind of security attack happens in your organization. So you need to know exactly what the best practices are to secure your exchange environment. What best practices you can follow in order to ensure that your exchange environment is safe and secure. So that's what we are going to be talking about in today's webinar. Um, and to 
say what the agenda is in detail let's take a look at this slide so this is what we are going to look at today i'm going to mention certain critical exchange aspects that you need to look into all the time in your organization the aspect the, the exchange related aspects that you need to be vigilant about in your exchange organization so i will tell you what they are i will tell you what the best practices uh, are that you can follow so i'm, I'm, I'm going to take a problem I, let's say auditing permission changes which incidentally is the first tip that i'm going to give you in today's webinar um so if we're going to talk about permission mailbox permission changes i will tell you exactly what the problem is with respect to mailbox permission changes how it can negatively affect your organization and what best practices you can follow in order to ensure that um you don't run into problems by way of permission changes like something as simple is changing permissions for some user who could end up being a rogue user we so, so that's something that we are going to look at and what best practices you can follow to avoid problems happening in your organization and finally um, and this is just the last 10 5 or 10 minutes of the webinar uh, i will be discussing about exchange reporter plus which is a change auditing monitoring and reporting solution from manage engine so it's going to help you audit monitor and get reports on your exchange environment so these are all the things that we are going to look at today this webinar will go on for maybe the next half an hour to 45 minutes not much longer than that so i will give you four tips there are exactly four tips in this webinar that i'm going to give you i'll tell you what the problem is i'll tell you what best practices you can follow and finally in the last five minutes i will give you a quick demo of exchange reporter plus um, and it won't be too much like a sales pitch which is why i've relegated it to the tail portion of this webinar because i don't want to talk about the product too much with you today is going to be all about learning learning what the best practices are for exchange auditing and for both your on-prem exchange servers and for your cloud setup for your exchange online so this is the agenda for today. I told you there are four tips. So let's go on to the very first tip for the day. Um, the very first thing that you need to do is track unauthorized mailbox permission changes. Um, and why exactly is this important? This is important because mailboxes are important in any organization because emails help you ensure communication, right? Because uh, you would have walked into work today and you've obviously shot out several emails to all your colleagues because that's the primary means of communication in every single workplace, right? From the lowest level, lowest rung in your organization to the highest employee like the CEO, everyone in your organization is going to be dependent on emails. Um, so let's, let's look at your CEO in detail. So your CEO is going to be using his mailbox He's obviously going to be sending some classified information. He's going to send several confidential reports or so on with his peers, right? And you wouldn't want such information to get into the hands of people that are not trustworthy, right? Because you need only owners and trusted delegates to have access over sensitive mailbox information because sensitive mailbox information is for certain eyes only. And this is the exact scenario where you need to know if any changes have been made to mailbox permissions in your organization. Because if someone does gain access to an important mailbox without any sort of business justification whatsoever, um, it's obviously going to have neg an, a negative impact on your organization. Because once someone gains access to a particular mailbox, they are going to have full access to mailbox content. So they can delete any of your messages. They can move any of your messages to different locations. They could send spam email messages to other people. So, so basically, mailbox permission changes, unauthorized mailbox permission changes is bad. And you need to track this. And there are several different scenarios in relation to this, which we will discuss in detail. One scenario is when you have a multiple administrator environment. If there are several administrators in your IT infrastructure team, you will obviously be familiar with what I'm about to say next, because when there are multiple administrators, any one of those administrators could have made a change in your organization. They could have um, they could have changed the mailbox permissions for a particular user, a particular user who did not have access to one mailbox earlier in the past suddenly has access to that mailbox. Um, and this could be a good user or this could also be a rogue user. So none of the other administrators are going to be familiar with it. 
what exactly happened in your exchange environment documentation as we all know is something that we all should do but we don't do so i will be getting into that later but uh, if documentation is not maintained properly in your organization you are never going to know which administrator uh, made what kind of mailbox permission change now this could be a legit change or it could also be something that could have a negative impact on your organization so you need to know when mailbox permission changes happen in your organization and um, this is the scenario because some administrator has made a permission change and and this user is probably not supposed to have access to that particular mailbox so you all exchange a bunch of emails with each other before you find out um, which administrator made what kind of change which is why documentation is really important but more on that later the next scenario that we are going to look at is the problem of rogue users. If you have a rogue user, they can mess up permissions in your organization, right? Because um, these rogue users, once they gain access to a particular mailbox, they have full access to confidential, any kind of confidential information that is present in that mailbox. If it is a classified um, report, this particular rogue user could leak the report. They could give it to your competitor. You could lose the deal. Um, any deal, any, any kind of business deal that you're trying to close with this confidential report, it's all going to be ruined because one rogue user gained access to a mailbox which he was not supposed to gain access to. Um, so, so because if this your organization's reputation is going to be tarnished and you may lose a business deal and you may lose out on market share. So these are all the problems that can happen because of something as simple as some random user getting access, full access rights over one important mailbox, which is why you need to audit mailbox permission changes vigilantly. You need to be very vigilant about what kind of mailbox permission changes happen in your organization. So that's the second scenario. Um, there's another scenario that we are going to look at, which is actually pretty simple when you think about it, but it's something that has actually happened. So all the scenarios that I'm mentioning here are things that our own customers, customers of Exchange Reporter Plus have mentioned to us. So, so when you're asking a customer for a testimonial, because I'm in marketing, I'm going to mention this. Uh, sometimes we ask them exactly what report helped them out and why. So some people usually mention uh, what problems they were facing before they used the product and, and how the product using the product solved the problem for them um, so these are all scenarios that they've mentioned and the third one though it sounds extremely simple it's something that um, one of our customers actually mentioned yeah so so this is the scenario so there is one senior employee in your organization named John and there's another employee who is maybe an intern or a new hire whose name is also John um, but but they both have like they're both John Doe's, but but one of the Doe's is spelled different, yeah, because of a slight difference in their spelling and the spelling of their names, it could lead to confusion. So when senior John is supposed to gain access to an important mailbox, the junior John could have gained access to it instead. Yeah. And this is obviously something that is not going to be beneficial in any way to your organization. It's an intern and the intern could be a normal person or they could be some kind of rogue user who's got it for your company and, and they decide to leak the information. So you always need to be careful about which kind of user you are giving access to um, and what kind of data you are giving them access over yeah so you always need to pay close attention to names when you are granting permissions and and access rights over mailboxes especially the mailboxes that carry sensitive business information so these are all the scenarios that um, that that could have a negative impact in your organization and these are all the scenarios where you will need to audit mailbox permission changes in your organization so these are all important let's move on to the best practices for this particular tip what are the best practices uh, needed in order to ensure that permission changes are done effectively in your organization the very first one is something that i mentioned earlier it's about documentation 
documentation is very very important documentation is the one thing that you need to do as an administrator um, in order to ensure proper functioning of your exchange environment so this is something that everyone says but no one does so documentation is really important especially if your team is huge if there are a large number of people in your um, IT infrastructure team you need to ensure that documentation is taking place yeah any change that you do no matter how simple it is you need to document it so that the next administrator the administrator who is working after you doesn't run into problems you need to pay close attention to usernames that's the second best practice and this is in direct uh, response to the scenario that i mentioned earlier you always need to make sure that the right john gains access to sensitive business information because if if any problem happens end of the day it's going to fall on the administrator's shoulders so pay close attention to usernames and try to avoid giving the wrong person access to classified business data so that's the second best practice when it comes to permission changes and finally you can use a third party tool such as exchange reporter plus um, and that's why i was mentioning the use cases that our customers have mentioned before um, because exchange reporter plus has one particular report called the mailbox permission changes report um, and it helps you track changes to mailbox permissions both for your on-prem exchange servers and for exchange online but the demo is going to be at the end of this webinar so, so forget i said that there are other best practices that you need to follow in order to ensure that you are keeping your exchange organization secure second what is my second tip for the day to you but before that uh, several new people have joined today's uh, I mean several more people have joined this webinar after I started um, so I'm just gonna tell you what I already told the people who joined initially um, we have um, you have a chat box that you can see on your screen if you have any questions at all do ask them we actually have someone at our end Shiva from the support team who's manning the chat box so any kind of question that you may ask Shiva will reply to you and if he cannot get to you on time I will also be keeping an eye on your questions I will answer your questions as soon as the webinar ends if Shiva hasn't addressed them already so go ahead and put the chat box to good use if you have any questions at all do ask us and you don't have to worry we will also be sending you a recording of this webinar and the slide deck um, in a few weeks um, okay not a few weeks but maybe in a week or so so you will be receiving an email with both the slide deck and the recording of this webinar so you do not have to worry any questions use the chat box that you see on the screen so let's come back into the topic uh, so the second tip for the day has to do with patching. You need a proper patching plan in your organization. Why exactly do you need patching? Um, you need it because missing patches are not that great because if you are not keeping your exchange environment updated, patched with all the hotfixes applied, it can lead to several security attacks because it, it just throws open the gates to your network to hackers, yeah, to attackers who decide to make use of this vulnerability in order to uh, wreak havoc in your organization. So you always need to make sure that your servers are updated and you always need to keep testing them in order to ensure that no problems um, are taking place that that no cyber attacks can happen you need to ensure that there is no open vulnerability in your organization um, and and of course if these server updates and patching are a little complex or time consuming for you you can always move to office 365 but if you're having on-prem servers you need to keep them patched you need to make sure that there are no vulnerabilities in these um, exchange servers yeah now the thing about patching um, so people say that and, and people generally say it and in an ideal world patches have to be applied immediately after updates are released because that's something that every, everyone says an admin needs to make sure that patches are applied as soon as they are released to the world and every organization will try to apply the security updates for their OSS and they do it as soon as the updates are released because um, think about it once the vulner vulnerabilities become public knowledge as I've mentioned here uh, hackers are also going to know that that particular vulnerability is out there they're going to try and make use of that vulnerability they are going to try and attack your exchange environment so as soon as vulnerabilities are disclosed in an ideal world um, people would apply patches immediately but there is a problem with that 
because sometimes patches themselves have caused vulnerabilities and this is something that has actually happened before um, and most of you must be familiar with this already because there have been several high profile incidents where the patch itself caused more vulnerabilities because this has happened to several high profile companies before um, patches have created problems in office they've caused the blue screen of death uh, system crashes these are all some of the more famous problems that patches have caused um, so so there's that so so you do need to apply patches as soon as they're released because hackers know them so you have that on one hand. On the one hand, you, you know that you need to apply patches because you don't want hackers to make use of an opening in your organization. On the other hand, you have the problem of patches themselves causing problems. Um, so what do you do? Isn't there a confusion here? Should you patch? Should you not patch? What should you do? So here's what you can do to get rid of this dilemma. So you don't have to install, um, I mean, you shouldn't actually ignore any of the patches or hot fixes or updates just because they may cause problems because um, just, just fearing about it, just, just being worried about it is not enough reason to not apply a patch because once you, as I've mentioned here in the second point, applying the patch um, doesn't cause as many problems as not applying a patch because uh, applying a patch is going to cause system failure well on the other hand not applying the patch is going to throw open the doors to your network to hackers and it can make your whole organization come crashing down so the risk of applying patches is definitely less than the risk of not applying patches but you can have a proper patching plan so that's what this tip is all about tip number two for the day so here's what you can do with respect to patching. Um, you need to test patches before you deploy them. Um, so find out how the patches work out in your environment. And um, so you, you just find out how any of the updates will work out in your environment. You can test them before deploying them to your entire network. However, there is this problem. If you have a small business, you will not have the luxury of a test lab, which is why you need to wait and watch. That's our tip. Our tip from Manage Engine is that you need to wait and watch and you need to delay patching for a while um, and, and just, just maybe not for a really long time, but delay patching for maybe a week and let someone else be the guinea pig. Yeah. Uh, see how the patch works out in um, works out for other people. Keep an eye on all the technical websites on go on community forums. See what people are saying about the patch. If they are saying that um, if they're saying that the patch itself is causing problems, don't apply the patch. If if nobody mentions a problem with respect to the patch, you can go ahead and deploy the patch because if the patch itself has issues, since you're already waiting, the software vendor is going to say, hey, the patch has issues. So I'm going to issue a new patch now. Yeah. So, so this is an added advantage because you are waiting for the fixes to be fixed. Yeah. So someone who has already deployed a patch or problematic patch will have to uninstall the original patch before they deploy the new one. Whereas you, because you are already waiting, you, you can just wait for the renewed patch to come up and you can install it afresh without going through the whole uninstallation process. So that is definitely an added bonus of delaying patching for a while. So you can obviously do that in your environment. And these are not the only best practices that I have available for you. There are several other best practices that you can follow when it comes to patching your on-prem exchange servers. Um, the very first thing is read, 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 read. Documentation is very important. Go through all of Microsoft security bulletins, read their KB articles, because um, you need to know all details that go with any particular patch, because some updates may require, um, they may have requirements from your end. You may have to install certain software or you may have to uninstall certain software before you apply a particular patch yeah so so to find out exactly what the requirements are before you apply a patch you need to go through microsoft security bulletins go through microsoft's kb articles before you apply a patch that's the first best practice Second best practice, again, scanning the community forums. Um, so if you are delaying patching by a week, if you are doing the wait game where you wait and see if any problems are reported with respect to the patch, you need to be on the community forums. 
take a look at all the forums see if any problems are happening with respect to patches because um in forum discussions if people are running into problems they are obviously going to be discussing it in forums so so keep an eye on the forums and um find out if it is safe to deploy the patch um, so it's up to you read through the forums find out if deploying the patch in your environment is going to cause a problem yeah third thing analyze your need for the patch um, and why do you need to do this uh, it, it you need to do this because the patch may not be relevant to you um, if it is a security update it is obviously going to be relevant to you you need to apply it in your exchange environment whereas if it is not a security update and if it is for certain performance issues or if it fixes reliability um, like find out exactly what the patch does if it just adds certain features and functionalities which you don't particularly need at the moment you do not have to apply the patch apply the hot fixes only if you actually need them and and this is not about security updates this is about any feature addition any functionality addition that may be there for patches yeah so just make sure that you apply a patch um, only if it is um, I mean make sure that you apply a patch only if it is something that you actually need and then um, the next thing that you can do and the final best practice that I'm giving for you is that you should be prepared to roll back always expect the worst be I mean expect the best but be prepared for the worst yeah so have a plan for rolling back your updates because if an update itself causes a problem um then uh, it, it's always good if you can restore your machine to how it was before you applied the patch yeah so that there is not um, i mean there's just a minimum amount of downtime so be prepared to roll back take proper current backups you need to have a recovery process in place in your organization your recovery process must be tested out sometimes um, and and you need to always make sure that uh, you are prepared for a rollback if you have current backups yeah and even if you cannot test this out in a full test lab you can always apply the patch first for a small number of machines in your organization um, so if you do not have a test lab still you can use it on certain non-critical um, machines machines which will not affect your business continuity in any way observe these machines observe the patches if no problems show up you can gradually roll out the patches um, to all the other systems in your organization so that's that so these are all the things that you can do in order to ensure that patching is done in a proper manner in your exchange environment yeah so so that's that tip number three uh, we are going to move on to the third tip for the day, which has everything to do with Outlook Web Access. Um, this tip is about how you can identify any kind of threat that arises through OWA usage. I'm going to give you certain best practices to do with certain aspects of Outlook Web Access in order to ensure um, that you don't run into problems. And the very first thing when you say security is passwords. Password is something that is closely associated with security, obviously. Um, and I'm talking about this because it is certainly a weakness that can be exploited. Webmail passwords are very easy to crack because you can easily find out exchange passwords via the web. Um, and this is something that I actually read today. Um, so right before the webinar, I was reading an article about how easy it is to exploit OWA passwords. Because all you need is one weak password for an attacker to get in. Um, and because it is web mail, they can easily do this. Um, and this is how they, they do this. This is what I learned from the article that I read. So all the hacker would have to do is download documents off your organization's website. Yeah. So they download the documents and then they look for usernames in the metadata of this document. Yeah. So through usernames, they can um, do some minimal research about your company and then they can create a password list. And then all they'll have to do is use a brute force script in order to run your password attack yeah so something as simple as this but but this is actually something that has happened before and there are several articles about it which i found very surprising um so in order to avoid something like this happening in your environment you need to make sure that your users are using stronger passwords so this is a kind of password cracking attack that can create denial of service um 
because um, it, it, it just takes one password for the attacker to get in. So once they get into your one of your mailboxes, they can obviously gain access to certain public folders. They can find out other email account names. They can also uh, crack other users' passwords. Um, so, so these are all the reasons, I mean, all the ways through which um, passwords can be exploited in your organization, which is why you need certain best practices when it comes to OWA passwords. Okay. First thing you can do, educating your users. You need to tell your users the importance of choosing stronger passwords. Why exactly they need to choose stronger passwords in order to ensure that um, any problems like this don't happen. So, so send out a mass email, put out a document, a best practices document for all the employees in your organization, or, or you can always reserve one particular day in order to um, evangelize the importance of password security to your end users. Um, so you can do all of this in order to ensure that your users um, know the importance of having stronger passwords. So that's one thing you can do. Um, the next thing you can do is have proper login controls. Um, so so if, if you don't have proper login controls, attackers are going to be able to crack passwords and get into your uh, mailboxes. So have proper login controls in place. Um, and, and passwords and any kind of login mechanism, these are all weaknesses. They, they can all be weaknesses, which is why you need to perform penetration tests, have a test account, perform your own password penetration test and check out how easy it is. So you can do all of these best practices, ensure, I mean, follow all of these best practices in order to ensure OWA security in your organization. And then there's another aspect of OWA security um, that we need to discuss here, and that has to do with authentication. So OWA provides several methods for authenticating to exchange. So there's something as simple as your basic username and password, and there's something as complex as forms-based authentication. And you should always choose forms-based authentication because forms-based authentication is secure. It stores the username and password in a cookie, and this cookie is deleted as soon as the user logs out, or um, this cookie is deleted after a certain time period has passed. Yeah. So you should always choose uh, forms-based authentication. However, there's a problem in what I just mentioned. I told you that the cookie is deleted after a certain amount of time has passed, after the user has logged out. Yeah, But if the user does not log out, or if the user does not close the browser after, after they've accessed their mailbox, another user can go through the cached credentials until the session times out. Do you see where I'm going with this? That's obviously going to have a problem. So one thing that most organizations always follow is lowering the timeout value. So especially you should do this, especially for computers that your organization doesn't own. So for any kind of client computer, any kind of public client computer, the timeout value for forms based authentication should be low in order to ensure that another user doesn't go through the cached credentials and, and go through your mailbox as long as the session doesn't time out. Yeah. So this is, again, a best practice that you can follow. And finally, have a good password plan in place. So this this is the most important best practice that I can recommend when it comes to passwords. Educate your users, have a password plan in place, and ensure that um, things are not going already in your organization. So that's something that you can do. And then the third problem when it comes to OWA is attachments. Um, attachments are actually a big security risk with OWA, and many users um, do not know this. Because um, attachments, because they are a security risk, when a user opens an attachment through OWA, it creates a local copy in their temporary internet files. So a local copy of an attachment that's open through OWA is going to be present in your temporary internet files. And anyone um, who has access to that particular computer can view this particular local copy. And this is a huge concern, especially when users um, access their attachments through public computers. So you need certain best practices in order to ensure that a problem like this doesn't happen. So um, what you can do is you should you can allow users to open attachments um, that are only of approved file types. So that is something that um, you can do uh, because you do not want users um, the able, you do not want to give them the ability to open certain attachments which can suddenly expose them to malware or any kind of uh, malicious attachments. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, and another thing you can do is use OWA properties in order to control file access. Um, so this is what I meant by that. Uh, so through your OWA properties dialog box, you can choose what kind of access you are giving to your users. Um, it helps you control the types of attachments they can download, or you can turn off the ability to access file shares and share points through here. So there are a lot of things that this dialog box is going to allow you to do. So you can control OWA file access easily using, um, I mean, easily in order to ensure that um, weaknesses that arise by way of attachments do not occur in your organization. Um, so that was the third tip for the day. And the last tip that I'm going to give you with respect to exchange auditing and exchange security has to do with emails that contain malicious attachments. And this is something that cannot be spoken about enough. It needs to be talked about. It's something that all of us need to be aware about. So I'm going to go back to what I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. It's something that Gartner has had mentioned in one of their reports that spending on information security will exceed $93 million. Um, billion, $93 billion. Um, so, so if you do not want to be a part of that statistic, uh, you need to wake up and secure your exchange environment. And this is a very important tip that has to do with it because there are several security attacks um, that happen by way of emails because emails are a very easy gateway for malware. Yeah, because uh, everyone in your organization is going to be email. Uh, I mean, everyone in your organization is going to be using emails and all it takes is for one unsuspecting user to open a malicious attachment and that is going to throw the doors of your network open um, to attackers. Cyber attacks are going to happen. Your, in your network is going to become vulnerable and your organization's reputation amongst end users could be tarnished. So this is something that is really important. It's something that you need to keep an eye on. Um, you need to um, ensure email security and um, make sure that there are no problems that happen because of malicious attachments. So I'm going to give you an example here, which is very specific to email security. Fireball. So I don't know how many of you have heard of Fireball, but I'm just going to give a quick introduction for the people um, who who did not who did not find out what exactly Fireball was and how it affected certain people. So this was something that happened last year. Um, I think it happened in June or July, in the, in the June, July range in 2017. Um, and this this is an example that I always use in all my um, presentations about exchange security, because uh, this was a very um, devastating attack. Um, it was not widespread, but it did happen for certain people. Um, so this Fireball is an adware and it is a browser hijacker. So what Fireball does is it takes control of your internet browsers and it can spy on your web usage and it can steal any of your personal files. So so these are all the problems that it, it could do. Um, and and Last year, early last year, a particular cybersecurity firm found out that Fireball was linked to a Chinese firm called Rafotech. So this Rafotech was, in, was a company that specialized in digital marketing and in games. They produced games. They were busted in July. So what they were doing with Fireball was this. They were using Fireball for an advertising fraud. So Anytime a victim entered a query into Yahoo or Google, uh, it would redirect them um, to someplace else. And it, it, it also had tracking pixels, which would get victims personal information. So, so Rafotech had a number of products and, um, and whenever someone downloaded one of these products, uh, they would come bundled with a malicious strain of this adware of with a malicious uh, strain of Fireball. So once this particular software is installed, the malware installs browser plugins. It will manipulate the victim's web browser configurations and it will also replace their default search engines yeah, with, with fake search engines. And none of this was legitimate um, and, and it was spying on web traffic. It would execute malicious code. It would install plugins. Uh, a lot of malware dropping was happening and, and this just created a massive security hole in all the targeted systems and networks. There were several organizations that were affected because of this. And this is unique because this happened exclusively through emails. I will explain this. So how exactly does Fireball get into your system? 
So what happened was um, Fireball would appear as a link to a PowerPoint file in emails. Um, so it would say something as simple as order.ppsx or invoice.ppsx. So order, invoice, these are all things that, that unsuspecting users sometimes tend to open because it sounds important. Uh, it sounds like something that could be from your income tax department. So what would happen is uh, these were all links and, and you didn't even have to click the link. Simply hovering your mouse over the link would download the ad wire to your system. The subject line of these emails would also sound really important such as purchase orders or confirmation. It would come with an attached zip file which contained the ad wire and so on. Now take a close look at this thing order.ppsx. So this is what the link said or if it had an attachment it would say .ppsx. So I was talking about unsuspecting users. Uh, they would think this is a PowerPoint file but .ppsx is not the extension for a PowerPoint file. Yeah, but people would still uh, because because you don't really read it. Your mind tends to automatically correct anything that is uh, typed out wrongly. So, so you automatically think this is a PPT file. You open it just to check out what exactly it is. And that's how you invite malware into your network. Yeah. So this is why Fireball was important and um, this is why you need to guard your exchange environment. Emails are something that you need to secure. Write this down and remember this. Emails are something that you need to secure. You need to guard your exchange environment from um, adware attempts such as Fireball. Um, you need to protect your exchange environment from security attacks, cyber attacks. Um, so, so these are all things that you need to do. And these are the best practices that you can follow. You need to make sure that patching is done cautiously in your exchange environment. Patching should be done properly. I, I dedicated a whole tip to this and I told you um, how exactly you can um, patch and what kind of uh, plan you can have when it comes to patching in your exchange environment. Uh, you need to use a proper filtering tool in order to avoid phishing emails because phishing emails are another scam that's happening, whole new scam. Um, and something that I'd like to mention here is this because it's income tax season in US and in Canada. There are a lot of phishing emails that are happening recently um, which which seem which seem pretty harmless initially it says something like your income tax refund in the subject line so you go click on it and and it has a malicious attachment so when you download that that's how you invite malware into your network so you need to have a proper filtering tool in order to avoid phishing emails Finally, you need to educate your employees about email security. Tell them what kind of problems happen when they open random emails. Uh, show them what a normal phishing email is going to look like. Raise awareness about phishing emails. Tell them the negative effects. I mean, it's always going to be negative. The negative effects of malware and malicious emails and how exactly it can tarnish your organization's reputation. So it all begins with educating your employees so that they don't open any email because um, they weren't looking carefully. So, so explain it to them and from your end, ensure that no cyber attack affects, um, uh, affects your organization in a large scale, over a large scale. So that's something that you can do uh, from your end. So this was the last tip for the day. I've given you four tips so far. Um, we first talked about auditing mailbox permission changes. We talked about um, how you can have a proper patching plan in your organization. We talked about OWA and how uh, what best practices you can follow in order to avoid the weaknesses of OWA being exploited. And finally, we spoke about um, malicious um, attacks by way of emails. So these are all the tips that we mentioned today um, and I've given you certain best practices and I hope you found them helpful and if you have your own best practices that that you'd like to add you can always reach out to us through the chat box that you see on your screen and I'm very much willing to discuss it further with you because we are all always looking to learn so if there is any specific thing that you follow in your organization that you would like the world to know about you can always let us know we will obviously be crediting it to you um, so, so do let us know what kind of special best practice that you follow in your organization in order to ensure exchange environment security so that's something you can do. So we've reached the, the last part of today's webinar, which is an introduction to Exchange Reporter Plus, and this will last only for five minutes. Um, so I'm going to give you a 
very quick introduction to exchange report of class and if you are interested you can always reach out to me and i can give you i can schedule a personalized demo for you with one of our product experts so what they would do is they would find out how your exchange environment is find out what your requirements are and then they will give you a demo of exchange report of class which is tailored to your needs so do let me know if you would like a personalized demo too but before that let me give you a quick introduction to exchange report of class so exchange report of plus um, it helps with three things it helps you with reporting monitoring and auditing and it does this for both your on-prem exchange servers and exchange online so if you have a hybrid exchange environment do not worry at all exchange reporter plus is going to help you out here uh, it has more than 300 unique reports it gives you real-time alerts about any critical changes in your exchange organization so what i'm going to do for the next five minutes um, is this i'm going to switch to the product screen this is the product exchange reporter plus um, i've had it open for a really long time so it does this sometimes yeah, so I've logged into the product. This is the product. I'm going to give you a, a demo in, in three minutes. You can time it or, or it's definitely going, going to be under five minutes. And, uh, and this is how Exchange Report Plus works. So as soon as you log in, you are welcomed by the dashboard. Um, in the top of the screen, you can see several alerts that have been given. How is your disk usage status for this particular server? How is your email queue status? Is it critical? Does it require attention? Is it something that's healthy? So any kind of alert about your organization health is shown to you as soon as you log into the tool. It also has several intuitive graphs on the screen uh, where you can check the volume used by your databases, server storage usage. You can see the sizes of the top 10 mailboxes in your organization. What are the sizes of messages that are being sent and received? Um, and what are the number of messages that are being sent and received in your organization? So all the important information is going to be present here in the dashboard as soon as you log in. Um, and in addition to that, on the right hand side, there are several quick links through which you can just click on the report go to the report and check it out. Like service health is one report that we have available, which helps you check if all the required exchange services have started running. Yeah. Click, you can just click on the report, go to the report and check it out. So Exchange Report Plus, I already told you that it does three main things, reporting, auditing, and monitoring. So what is this tab that I have here, Exchange Online? Um, so, so reporting, auditing, and monitoring, these three tabs are for your on-prem Exchange servers, whereas Exchange Online is just for Exchange Online. It helps you report on and audit various aspects of Exchange Online. So I'm going to go tab by tab and explain um, or, or rather show what exactly is present in each of these reports. Under the reporting tab, you can look into several aspects of your exchange environment, such as mailboxes, OWA and Active Sync. Since we were talking about OWA earlier, let me just show what kind of reports we have. Um, so you can find out all the reasons for logon failure or if you want to find out which IP addresses OWA has been accessed from, you can use this report, the client IP based logon report. So if there are a large number of logons from one particular client IP address, you can use this report to figure out what the problem is. So this is something that you can do. Uh, it helps you keep an eye on email traffic and all of these reports are real time. Um, so you are going to get real time details about email traffic in your exchange organization. You can get details about distribution lists. Finally, we help you comply with a number of regulatory mandates such as SOX, HIPAA, PCI, GLBA, and look look at that we have gdpr we actually help you comply with the gdpr too um, i mean not entirely with the gdpr but um, anything that has to do with email data exchange reporter plus is going to help you out um so so it also helps you comply with gdpr when it comes to um the email data in your organization next is the auditing tab um, so in the auditing tab, um, we are going to help you audit various aspects of your exchange environment. These are all for your on-prem exchange servers. So if you take a look at non-owner mailbox logon, this is a report that is going to show you when users other than owners of a mailbox try to access a particular mailbox. It shows you which user tried to access a particular mailbox, what was the name of the mailbox, email address, server name, and the time at which um, this happened. Yeah, time at which 
at which the log on happened so in addition to this there are a number of other things that the um, auditing tab of exchange reporter plus does it helps you audit mailbox permission changes in your exchange organization you can see if there are any storage quota changes or if there are any circular logging changes you can audit DAG failovers in your organization and so on so these are all the things that you can do for the on-prem exchange servers in your organization next we have the monitoring tab um, which helps you monitor various aspects of your exchange environment such as DAG, your servers your databases you can monitor storage you can monitor your emails you can monitor email queue health mail flow health and so on and it also gives you alerts about any critical aspects so both under auditing and monitoring we give you several alerts if a particular service stops running we will give you an alert if a database is dismounted if a non-owner mailbox logon happens or if there is any sudden permission change in your organization for all of these things we give you real-time alerts you will immediately get an email that says hey so this particular change has happened why don't you take a look at it so you get that kind of an email that kind of an alert all the time and now for all of you hybrid environment users and people who use just exchange online we have a whole tab dedicated to exchange online which helps you report on your mailboxes so you can check mailbox sizes email traffic it helps with owa and active sync and several other reports such as room mailbox usage about your calendars and so on but we are going to focus on the audit part of um, this exchange online tab so under Exchange Online, you can perform mailbox audit logging. So if, if you want to check out what kind of activities Exchange administrators have performed, I kept talking about multiple administrator environments. So if you want to audit all the changes other administrators have performed, you can just come to this report. It shows you uh, when an administrator logged on, who was the administrator, what's their UPN, what operation did they perform, what was the result of the operation and so on so all those kinds of details you can get from this report of exchange reporter plus and in addition to that there are several other things that we provide such as malware detection spam detection spam detection which shows you what kind of spam has been sent or received yes i said sent so both inbound and outbound spam can be detected using exchange reporter plus so you can see when the spam was sent uh, who sent it what was the recipient address what was the subject of the email and what kind of event was it and there's also a graph at the top of the screen which gives you all the information you need it shows you um, the the what kind of spam content it is and how much has been sent mailbox permission changes is again something that we discussed so if there is any mailbox permission change in your exchange online environment you can obviously track it using um, this particular report it shows you when it happened um, which object was modified if if and and what kind of properties were modified if there were a result this would be filled up what command was used in order to bring about the modification and you can always add other details to this when exactly did it happen what activity was performed what are the parameters of the command lit so you can add several other data points to this report in order to get more information so these are all the things that exchange reporter plus does um, and and this was just a very quick demo about very few features of exchange reporter plus but it does so much more than what i showed you just now um, so you should definitely check out exchange reporter plus more and if you want a personalized demo or if you want a quote for this particular product you can always reach out to me um, and my email address is right here it's shruti at manageengine.com and we will be sending you a recording of this webinar soon um, in a few days so you can look forward to that email um, and in the meantime if you have any questions do reach out to us and we will answer them immediately and um, towards the end of this webinar I was talking about the GDPR um, and since several of you will be several people here would be looking to comply with the GDPR there's something that we have for you 
we are we have a resource kit available uh, with a handbook and you get a free webinar out of it um, and several emails from us about what the best practices are um, that you can follow with respect to complying with the gdpr um, so i'm going to post this link in the chat box and you can always um, take a look at it so you can register for the resource kit and if it is something um, that you think would help you out you can always register and get it done um, so there's that. Um, so in addition to the GDPR, Exchange Reporter Plus does so much more. Um, I've given you four tips, four best practices. And with respect to Exchange Reporter Plus, if you want a personalized demo, do reach out to us. Um, you can always email me at shruti at manageengine.com and I will get back to you immediately. So there's that. And uh, that's it for today's webinar. I hope you guys were able to learn something of value from today's webinar. And as I mentioned, you can always reach out to me if you have any special best practice that you follow um, in your organization. So do reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, and I hope this was useful for you. If this webinar uh, was not, um, I mean, it was 45 minutes well spent for you. I really do hope that you learned something of value. So thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Um, and I'm really happy that uh, you guys were attentive throughout. So thanks so much for that. I hope you have a great day today.